It is great to be here tonight, and uh, I think what makes it very special is that I'm here with my friend Luchuan. Uh, we had an amazing experience making this film, uh, and it is, as said before, uh, an effort over three continents, and some of those people from those different continents are here today. So I just wanted to, uh, to share Fei Yu, who is our music editor, is here. There she is. You can stand up, Fei Yu. It's good. And then my good friend and one of the writers on this, David Fowler, who actually comes from North America, <laughs> from the Canadian end. Uh, and then uh, Barnaby Taylor, the composer, and I have to say, Barnaby, one of the most stunning um, scores I've heard. Thank you. Yeah, this has been a complete joy for me. I generally work in animation, and to be able to share with you and to the world this phenomenal, uh, talented group of filmmakers, uh, some of the greatest cinematographers in the world uh, in the natural history uh, realm have worked on this film, and it has been just an honor. And uh, I think the greatest honor, as I began with, is working with this man. So I'm gonna let him speak now. Um, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you for coming. Uh, I think today is a very special day. Today is a big day, not, not only for us, I mean, the, the, the partners, the team members. We spent three years to make this movie, but also I think it's a special day, it's a big day for this movie. Um, I, uh, I, think, I think it's an incredible memory for me in my life to work with uh, such a, you know, incredible people from Disney, from from England and uh, from China, and uh, we work together as a one family to, to, to you know, break through the, the darkest the tunnel, and uh, finally we did this. It's great, you know, <laughs> it's great. Nature movie is never an easy movie <laughs> for me. <laughs> as a feature film director, I can say nature movie is, a, is great, it's a great project. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm not good at speech, a uh, speaker, I, I cannot, you know, it's my first time to make speech in public, you know, <laughs> in English, you know, so. <laughs> but I always believe movie is our best speech, so enjoy the speech, is my, or my message from our heart. Thank you. Well, first of all, let me just say again, it's an honor to have you both here in the theater. Thank you very much for an amazing film and for joining us here tonight to talk about it. Well, so as Cheng Sim had mentioned sort of at the beginning, this is a question for both of you, um, the same question. Um, you're both internationally recognized and esteemed filmmakers, but there isn't really anything in your earlier filmographies that would suggest that Disney Nature True Life Adventure was your next project. So, Roy, let's start with you. <coughs> um, what was it about this project or the people involved that made you want to take, or just take on that creative challenge of this new kind of pr film for you? Yeah, it's interesting, because I grew up with uh, True Life Adventures, um, you know, growing up in the 50s, 60s, just kind of falling in love with uh, Jungle Cat and the Living Desert. So it's something that was kind of ingrained in my culture in, a, in an interesting way. And I love dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I love my dogs. I love my animals. Uh, but then um, I had just finished Big Hero 6, and um, Paul Barabo approached me and asked me if I would be interested in working on this. And uh, I asked who was directing, and mentioned a fellow named Lu Chuan, who I had uh, I didn't know his work. <laughs> uh, he gave me, uh, Paul gave me uh, um, several DVDs. I watched three films in one night and knew I had to work on this. I just knew I had to work on this. And so it began an amazing adventure. Director Lou? Uh, yes, I, 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 for me, I spent almost uh, 10 years uh, in the feature film circle, so I never, Imagine you know Disney, well, well came come to me and uh, give me the offer to make a nature movie. You know, Tony Tony came to Beijing and uh, he said he watched all my 
works and uh, uh, feature films. He lo loves my works and uh, he he want to help me to make a, I guess he will say a big adventure uh, franchise, blah, blah, blah. But he said it, he will help me to make a nature movie with Disney. <laughs> so so I, I'm, a, I'm quite surprised at, at the time. But, you know, I... Um, one of my close friends, Barbara here, you know, we we made a uh, uh, we made a, a movie about churro and kukusili. Uh, uh, it's uh, you know almost twelve years ago. So, star that movie. I from that movie, I, I love in love with uh, wild animals, and uh, so I think maybe I should take the chance to you know. Why not? And uh, you know, work with Disney is a, is my dream. Why not? I, I, so, so two reasons: wild animals and uh, Disney. So, <laughs> I take the job. The perfect combination. <laughs> well, so let's talk a little bit about process. We see some of the members of the three teams, the camera teams that were out in the field in the closing credits, and so. One of the ways that I imagine or understand that uh, True Life Adventure differs from producing a, a fiction narrative feature is there's no script. You have to wait for the stories or the images to come to you from these far-flung places. And then you have to see if a story emerges. And we focused on these three animal families. Um, you know, for me, one of the things that's amazing about this film is it really underscores how powerful a storytelling medium film is because these are these animals and these creatures that, they're animals, but we really react to them and respond to them very emotionally. But when you're watching the footage, when do you know that the story is coming together? Is there, I mean, big moments like Dawa's hunting process or even the May May falling out of the tree. Like, are these moments that t that you see when you first see them? Are you there? This is the story is here, or do you have to live with them for a while? What's what's the process, Roy? If you could start. Well, uh, we had over four hundred hours of footage, um, and really, the true heroes behind this work are the cinematographers who are out in the field. Uh, some of the most stunning artists uh, I've ever met and ever worked with. Um, just the snow leopard footage alone is uh, so rare and we are the first um, team to actually have captured uh, cub footage. There's no cub footage except for what you saw tonight. Um, so these guys go out into the field for 253 days on the, a snow leopard shoot and live in the most you know, inhospitable places, and they journal what they're filming. And from those journals and from that amazing footage, we work backwards, mm -hmm. and that's how we build those stories. And then you have someone like Chuan, and someone like David Fowler, and someone like Barnaby Taylor to, you know, score it. Uh, you actually meet in the middle and make quite, you know, a, a powerful piece. Mm -hmm. Chuan, was there any particular moment when, I mean, in any one of the stories that you knew this was the story that we wanted to tell? Like, how did you, how did you respond to the footage and when did you know or how did the stories start to speak to you, the images start to speak to you in story? Um, you know, in, in the beginning, you know, um, I mean, three years ago, actually, uh, I wrote a synopsis. I, I wrote a treatment. So the title for that treatment is uh, Born in China. And uh, we we have a uh, structure similar to this this version, and uh, we ha we 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 use several animals to tell one story, and I try to deliver the message about the the, the Chinese people be believe on the motherland, on the uh, life, on the reincarnation. You know, because we most of Chinese people believe death is not the end of life; it's kind of another beginning. So in the treatment, we have this message. But the footage, you know, in the shooting process, I should say, being honest with you, you know, the footage just destroyed the whole structure. You know. <laughs> so I realized one thing, you know, I need to rebuild or to rewrite the whole script, use the footage, on the base on the footage. I, w I should be, I should open my chest, you know, to, to in, how to say, embrace, embrace the, the whole materials. 
So it's a, it's a long journey, I should say, Roy. But I'm very lucky. I, I have Roy, you know, I have uh, David, I have, uh, you know, my partners, you know, and uh, the, the people, you know, uh, in, in Bristol, my editor, my producer, Brian the Phil, you know, we working as a family, you know. Yeah, Brian together. Leith and Phil Chapman, who are from yeah, Brian Leith they are, they, they have Stuff. super sci scientist's brain, you know. I, I would actually say we are artist brain, but they are scientist's brain, but we working together, you know, in a the, in the very small room, you know, and uh, for, for almost one year. <laughs> but, you know, that's the, I mean, there are a lot of moments, you know, when um, I should say just uh, all of a sudden give me the inspiration and, and uh, tell me that's the story. But one moment is very important for me is uh, the, you know, Dawa, Dawa story, you know. Um, we have several cut and uh, I, I, I was not satisfied with, with the, 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 the cut, I, I should say, because it's not, I, I think that we, it's not, I hope the the movie has kind of a power we I can punch, you know. But but at that time the it's a little bit like a sugar covered, heavy covered. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what, what, what I need actually. So we me and the Roy we, we check the hard hard drive again and again. But finally I found a, a you know hard drive hiding secretly in the in the <laughs> corner, you know. <laughs> Mark Ben materials, <laughs> something like that, <laughs> bad <laughs> materials. But all of a sudden I saw that shot, you know, you know, Dawa lying uh, in the snow. Mm. Oh, all of a sudden I, I believe that's it. That's the something I, I need, you know. I have the movie now, so. There, there was another incident that happened during production that I think changed the direction, uh, particularly of the uh, of the panda story. Yeah. yeah. Mm, please. <laughs> it was the birth of his son. <laughs> yes. Yes. He, he became a father during this, and I th I I saw him as an artist change. From the wild animal to to uh, you know, <laughs> family family <laughs> animal. <laughs> I don't know, but yes, you know, yeah. Um, well, you mentioned, uh, Director Liu, you mentioned reincarnation, you mentioned the, the, that was something, the, the belief system that you wanted to sort of also um, express through the film. Uh, you know, the crane figures prominently in the film. The film not only tells us something about the importance of these animals to China's ecology, um, but also to its culture and its, its mythology. And was there any other sort of larger themes or uh, maybe a single message that you wanted audiences, Chinese or non-Chinese audiences, to take away from this film? Wow. Um, I, I think it's uh, now, it's my, it's not my duty, or it's not my job to, to say in front of the audience, you know, since the movie has finished. Yeah. Before, before finish this movie, I, I have to pitch my message to Roy again, 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 but now, movie finished. So I think now it's uh, it's uh, the freedom of audience to to digest or to like or hate this movie. Whatever. I, I you know I respect audience response. It's okay. But you know we just uh, hand this movie to audience. Yeah. Well we're gonna turn it over to the audience in a moment, but I wanted to ask the question of Roy. W was there a particular I mean, not a goal, but a, a message that, uh, that became important for you to project with this project? Well, you know, you work with Disney, and you know you're gonna, a lot of kids are going to see this, a lot of parents. Um, and it's really important that um, my wife and I are members of the Snow Leopard Trust uh, long before I got involved with this. Mm -hmm. And um, when I heard about the um, connection with World Wildlife Fund, and that we were going to be helping support uh, pandas and snow leopards from the proceeds, a portion of the proceeds coming in. Um, that was really a sense of pride for me mm -hmm. because the one message I want to get out is that these creatures are cherished. Right. They need to be protected. 
And uh, just to get a film like this on the screen and for people to see the innate humanity of animals right. is such an important, important thing. And the film opens on April 21st, and that opening weekend proceeds are going to be going to the Little Wildlife Fund. The, the whole first weekend. Yeah, the whole first weekend, so spread the word. So we're going to have mics on either side of the theater. Um, so raise your hand, and I'll call on you. We have time for a couple of questions. Any questions from here? Right here on the aisle. The, yeah, let's bring. We're going to bring the mic up to you right there. Um, I just wanted to know what happened to Dawa's uh, <laughs> cubs. I promise you, Dawa's cu uh, cubs are still alive. <laughs> I promise you. Um, right behind you there. Oh. Yeah, there, there's so many, so much in this film in which the animal behavior is understandable in human terms. Uh, that's very compelling. At the same time, there's always the risk of imposing human characteristics on animals in an inappropriate way. How did you draw the line, and was this a subject that you talked about? Yeah, we talked about that a lot. Um, you know, the anthropomorphization of animals is, uh, is something that is incredibly um, uh, worrisome when you're making something like this. Uh, but at the same time, having relationships with animals, you understand that there is, these are sentient beings and they do have thoughts and they do have relationships. So we would be very, you know, we, we would discuss deeply what we were putting on screen, particularly with uh, David, uh, our writer, who, who crafted the final script, wanted to make sure that, you know, we got to the essence of what the moment was. Another question from the audience? Let's go right here in front. I'm going to bring a mic over to you. This is a fairly similar, but um, at any point, did you feel like you were in the animal's point of view? Like, overall in time, you started to like grow with them. S so I was just like wondering, you know, if you were ever in the animal's point of view. What a great question. Um, Tuan, <laughs> did you ever <laughs> feel like you were in the animal's point of view? Um, just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree, you know, uh, but first of all, I should say we are part of the animal. After, you know, three years in this movie, I, I, I start to realize we, we, we are part of, the, part of the animal. I think it's not bad words because we, you know, we love our kids and we, we love our family. We respect parents. I think everything just, you can see similar behavior in from the a for animals. So we, we, I think we sometimes I have this kind of feeling that we create equal, yeah. but they did not treat it uh, equally. They, ha they have been treated equally. So, so mm, I uh, sometimes for some moment I, I, I can I, I feel I can feel the the heartbeat of the snow leopard. I can feel the heartbeat of a panda, you know. So we are part of them. You know. I, I truly be believe that, you know. We, you know, you, you, you become these animals' friends when you're working on it. And um, sitting in that seat, I, you know, there's moments where I start choking up. Uh, so, yeah, we, we, we invest ourselves in them and we understand, you know, we, we, we definitely have connected with them. Think about that scene, I mean, in terms of connection, when Dawa misses getting the yak calf and we you know the, it's sort of narrativized or it's, it's you know one child saved is another child endangered in the animal kingdom and I'm going back to the question of your living with these animals what is it like when you see when you when you're following them and you start seeing this real struggle for survival and you maybe start to anticipate what might be happening to Dawa or what's happening to her family no, I think that's really where the cinematographers come in uh, full play 
we have a rule. We do not interfere in any way with what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to stay a safe distance. It's it, obviously you can see with the monkeys that's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> but with the snow leopards, uh, you know, th um, it took something like uh, I believe it was 90 days before we got our first snow leopard footage. Um, they had been setting what we call camera traps, and they're basically, you know, remote location cameras that mm -hmm. track the paths of these animals. So um, Shane Morse, who's uh, Shane Moore, who is the um, uh, cinematographer on that, he's the one who's really dealing with their daily life and finding the rhythm. The interesting thing about that is he ended up. Uh, being in the field for 253 days, mm -hmm. had to go back over six seasons, and uh, <laughs> the 90th day was the last day of his visa. So he had to, the day he got his first shot, he had to leave China and go through again and come back. So it was a long, but once, you know, th this is the amazing thing with, with these guys, is once he understood their, their mindset and their patterns, that's when he started getting all the footage with the cubs, and it's phenomenal. We have time for one more question from the audience. Is there one more? Oh, over here in the back. Let's go over here in a sec. Thank you. That was really amazing. I'm wondering if any of those areas that in which um, the film was made are protected wildlife areas, or if that kind of concept exists. I should say most of the areas are protected areas. Yeah, um, the Chinese government, you know, spend a lot of efforts and uh, they spend a lot of money and uh, they literally protect a lot of area territory for for the wild animals so uh, that's why we can shoot you know we can find uh, finally the the, the, wild, the animals yeah. yeah i i think it's important to note and this is something that uh, you know it shocked me when i started working on this film um there are no wild areas in this world anymore it is it is really through cooperation with governments and with individuals and you know landowners that w that these creatures are allowed to exist and it's so important for us as citizens of this world to protect that well Luchuan, Roy Conley thank you so much for being here with us it's an amazing time thank you very much